Hey everyone, we're back for another teardown before the review of this card. We just reviewed the MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X. This is the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti Aorus Extreme Gaming video card. So we're going to be taking this one apart. It is huge. It's the biggest one that we've gotten so far. I think it's two and a half slots or something to that effect. And uh, uses a three fan cooling design that's somewhat interesting. We'll be taking it apart and then reviewing it shortly thereafter. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by the current bundle on the GTX 1060 and GTX 1080 video cards where you can get Ghost Recon Wildlands or For Honor at checkout. This comes alongside new MSRPs for the GTX 1080 series cards, now down to $500. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So going over the basics, the three fan design here, I'm sure they have a name for it of some kind, some kind of marketing name, but it is a wind force cooler. The interesting thing with the fans, you look at the side two, they're normal axial fans. The middle one's an axial fan as well, except this blade is actually cut kind of in half. And the reason it's cut in half is because these other blades come so close to them that if it weren't cut like that, they would collide. So theoretically, this allows Gigabyte to get an extra fan on there without taking up more width of the, the card, without making it wider, taking up more space. Now, how effective is that? We'll see. Not really 100% sure it's worth it, but we'll find out in testing. So other features of note, there's a, a copper piece here as part of the back plate. This is isolated from the rest of the back plate and connects to the rear side of the GPU down there via thermal pad. So theoretically that helps transfer some of the heat off of there. The hottest area tends to be around this spot where the VRM, uh, the MOSFETs and the inductors are. But we'll go ahead and give the backplate a test, just like we did with the MSI Gaming X, although that was published only in the article. If you're curious to see how much or if the Gaming X backplate affects that card, we'll do the same for this one, see if this affects this card. Now, normally, backplates are primarily for structural support. For something this large, it makes a lot of sense. You've got a massive cooler with a huge dual set of aluminum heat sinks, and then the base plate and the cold plate. So you want some kind of support here to keep it straight and prevent sagging. The fact that they've added this to it means that they are also trying to do something thermally. And we'll look at that. Uh, it, other than this, there's some LED stuff going on, LEDs here as well, and LEDs in the crossbars on the front. So in terms of the card beyond that, we've got a set of five visible heat pipes. There are probably more towards the inside of the card. Five visible heat pipes that look to be six, maybe eight millimeters. Those might be eights. And uh, and then looking down the center of the card, I can see that they've got what look to be two or five millimeter thermal pads in most places, which are pretty large. So we'll go ahead and start taking it apart and look at all that stuff. For this, it looks like it's all Phillips. And part of this disassembly process is so that we can get thermal couples on it to read the FET and uh, and other temperatures, PCB backplate or backside, all that stuff. I had to peel all the pads off. That is a ton of cables. Okay, so this one goes here. This is more for my information than anyone else's. That one goes there. This one goes there, this one goes there, and we've got one unused connection here, and they are using the lower down one. That's more for my info for later. All right, so the back plate has these things. Uh, these are where the actual Phillips head screws were, and then the other ones um, just you don't do anything with them. You, as soon as these are out, you can just pry the card off the plate, off the base plate, which is pretty nice. That's not normally how easy it is. Then once we get under there, you can see that these screws are where the uh, rest of the back plate is being held on. So we're gonna have to remember to put these back in during the reassembly process. They're on the sides horizontally of the GPU, one bottom center, or bottom uh, center between these two. Uh, one near the power, and then those not spring retained. And the screw size is the same. The screw actually is, I think, exactly the same, yeah, as the rest of what was used in the back plate. So that makes organization easier. 
that should be it for the back plate. Uh, we might not have to remove the cover, the expansion cover over there. Okay, all right. Power cable for LEDs. Lots of cables on this card. I think there's a $750 card. Oh, okay, I just taped in there. I mean, why not if it, if it works? So there's your uh, LED pad, I suppose. And we've got, or diffuser anyway with LEDs in it. That's your power. Now for the thermal solution, this you can just pull off as well. Back center where the capacitors are, there's no pad. Around the sides, there's a thermal pad. That will conduct heat away uh, and then theoretically expose it to the outside. Now you would need a fan directed at this or at least case fan to actually get the thing to, to do anything. Otherwise, it's just gonna saturate and there's no dissipation. You need dissipation as part of the equation to cool something uh, when you're conducting. So um, these thermal pads are contacting with the VRAM backside right here. There's no VRAM backside coverage anywhere else, so it's just here. And then this line is making contact for uh, this capacitor bank that's on the back of the card, actually. And this fatter pad is making contact, it looks like, yeah, where the MOSFETs are attached on the other side, right here. So let's flip this over. Oh, and then we've got a hole in the middle. Uh, for their LEDs, so that would probably be the hottest spot. Now, will it matter? Probably not. MOSFETs can get very high in temperature and they don't really care. Oh, uh, also, there's a front HDMI on this board, which is useful if you are trying to do a VR pass-through, I guess. Uh, but that's all that's there for. So, pretty, pretty densely packed board. We've got uh, the chokes down the center. Uh, anything of note would, well, first of all, going over the power headers again, some of these are for LEDs. So there's LEDs on the front and the back and the top of the card. So there's three of those. Uh, and then the others are for the fan power. And let's, let's just see if the fans, if it's, uh, is it three cables or is it one? Because if it's, or two rather. Um, because if they've individually separated the cables, we could actually disconnect the middle one and see if it does anything of note in the noise and temperature department. There's the middle one. Okay, so it's pretty hard to see. But down this channel there, uh, the middle fan is connected to a uh, pass-through or extender cable extension. And that's going out to one of these other ones. It's probably, probably this one. But that's going out the side, so we could actually disconnect some of the fans if we wanted to. I'll have to try that and see if it works the way I, I would like it to work. Now, in terms of the cooling solution beyond the fans, what we've got is a massive copper cold plate for the GPU and for the VRAM. So this quite clearly contacts the GPU, and then these make contact with the VRAM modules. This one is missing the same VRAM module as every other 1080 Ti we've opened so far. Same physical position. Uh, and then on this, so we've got VRAM contact, VRAM contact, VRAM contact, all syncs to the same copper cold plate. And then that's getting cooled by the heat pipes. For the heat pipes, you can see that there are five really small ones in there. Pretty interesting. So we got five there, a bigger one, uh, still not a six mil though. Bigger one that's routed into this aluminum block and that terminates in here. So there's the terminating end is down there or you can see it's crimped. And then this heat pipe routes around, goes, it looks like it goes under the plate with the VRAM then potentially back in. Uh, so that's what we've got for the cooling solution. There are four screws here, which I'm not, it looks like those help secure it to the aluminum fin stack. And then we've got these like massive bolts on here too. This thing is really built up in, uh, in a big way in terms of hardware. What is even holding on? You know, let's, let's mess around with this and see what happens. So four screws here. 
I'm thinking this might come loose. And this, by the way, this design, we've talked about it a few times now, but it's basically because they are deciding to cool the GPU and the VRAM, this is kind of a new thing the last year or so it's gotten popular. That means your GPU core temperature will be higher than if they only core cooled the GPU core. If you're cooling multiple things with the same plate, the temperatures get, so like if we took this and we physically cut that off, the GPU core temperature would look lower in software, but you lose the VRAM cooling uh, efficiency in theory. So it's, it's a good trade. Normally an extra couple de degrees doesn't really kill you on the GPU core, but having the extra cooling on the VRAM is nice. These are eight millimeters. There's another one in there, so I'm not really sure we're gonna get anywhere with this, but we can try it. Just cause I haven't seen anyone do this on a video card cooler ever. I'm sure it's been done. I've only been in the industry so many years, nine years or so, but uh, this is new to me, so we're gonna mess with it. Uh, where are we mounted? Oh, where's the other one? Oh, there's another big bolt down there. Oh, I think I got it. So, there's another screw hidden down here. This is some of the most industrial assembly of a card I've seen any time lately. Oh, that's going to be a real pain. That's not going to be fun to reassemble. So, mostly because of the cables and the routing of the cables. All right, so the thing I was curious about with the big uh, bolts going through here with the, what are these, 8 mil nuts on the end. This is just like it looks like a another spacer type thing that will actually fall off if you let it so not that anyone should be doing this but be aware of that you can see the kind of dents and damage here that's from where the cables are routed uh, the center channel is a bit is it the same density same fin density it's just got this uh bar down the center which we've seen several times in other cards but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what exactly is going on with these bolts running through. It might just be structural support. Like we could take, we could try and take those out. I would need a, an L shaped Allen wrench to do it. That's very sharp. Do I have something that can do that in arm's reach? I really think that, okay, so this is all this is doing, having looked at it now, these bolts running through, if you were to, to loosen this and pull it out, which good luck with that, you'd have to get this one off too. If you loosen them and remove them, I believe this aluminum fin stack would separate from the copper plate, which makes sense because they're not gonna manufacture this thing all at once. It's, it's the copper plate will be made separately from the uh, aluminum heat sink. So that's how that's held together, I believe. Tons of just five small heat pipes in here. The other one there, we've got another set of like three or, f we've got five more total coming out of this side, which this is the VRAM side, or VRM side, excuse me. Uh, so your VRM and uh, inductors and all those components are cooled by this directly as indicated by the thermal pads contacting, you can see the indents, contacting the components. Uh, there's a little rubber bumper here, and that more or less sums up the cooling solution. We'll have to see how it works in testing. Okay, so these things right here, the FETs, these are Fairchild 6823Cs, which are a part of their, it's a driver IC, and it integrates two FETs. That'd probably be your high side and low side. And then it's also got a diode in there uh, in what's a, ultimately a six by six package. So that's the Fairchild dual FETs, uh, or it's a driver IC with, with two FETs, high and low side, I believe. Bill Joyd's the expert on that for the channel, but that's what I'm starting to learn here. And then other than that, uh, I think we've pretty much gone over the card. So 
Full review is forthcoming. We'll have the usual overclocking, testing. I have a lot of thermal testing to do on this one. I'm not 100% sure how much we'll do in the first run for the review. Might revisit it shortly after for more. Uh, but in the very least, we'll be testing the VRM temperature as we've done in the past. So that will be comparable to some of the other VRM temperature tests we've done, like the 1080 Ti Gaming X from MSI. Do the GPU temperature, frequency, stability, all that stuff. Check back for all of that. As always, you can subscribe for more, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. The store for shirts, if you are a fan, is store.gamersnexus.net. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.